Uh, my name is Dmitry, and uh, I'm going to speak about the new concept, uh, Aqua, the language. So, we are thinking a lot about uh, going to the planet scale and beyond the planet scale to extra planetary things. And uh, in the planet scale, problem solutions are delivered as distributed protocols. And as we have many problems, uh, many different problems, we have many different solutions. And this means many protocols. Every protocol could be decomposed and uh, then made uh, from distributed algorithms, uh, something to compute on the peers um, and data. So the question is, how distributed algorithms are implemented. Currently, if you want to implement a new distributed algorithm, you analyze it, decompose it into the pure API, and then implement it on top of, uh, usually on top of lib P2P. For example, you take Go lib P2P or Rust lib P2P or something like that. And uh, uh, there are some challenges. Uh, first of all, if you want to see that uh, your algorithm works, works on scale, works for your, uh, I don't know, uh, use case, you need to roll out the network that hosts this algorithm. Uh, then you need to re-implement it on every language. If you want to go Go, you need to go Go. If you need to, to go Rust, uh, you need to go Rust and so on. Uh, and implementation in one language uh, does make it simple, us usually does make it simple to implement it in another. And uh, often the way from research to deployment might take infinite time. Uh, because, like, how, how it happens. The problem is identified, researchers are going to do their research. Uh, it, this ends up in simulations of the new algorithms, and uh, uh, these simulations are used to prove some new capabilities, uh, why the new algorithm is better than the previous for some use cases. And after that, uh, often it's, it's the end. Uh, and uh, this is the situation that, that we have, for example, for uh, lib P2P. We have many implementations and we have some algorithms uh, which are made in some of the implementations of libp2p. And uh, they are not automatically ported to other languages and implementations because it's quite hard to kind of reverse engineer it to the specification and then back to implementation or do something like that. And sometimes it uh, lasts forever. And the same holds for um, the approach to uh, solving like scalability problems. For example, uh, yesterday or the day before yesterday, uh, I attended the talk about partition Kademlia, and it has this simulation. Uh, it solves some, some of the problems. It shows uh, great uh, capabilities. But will it get to lib P2P? I don't know. Probably it would be hard. And that's, uh, that's the moment to say about Aqua. Aqua is uh, the new language, uh, it's based on PyCalculus, and it's made for scripting decentralized protocols on top of libp2p, IPFS, and beyond. So basically, it's a paradigm shift. Uh, Aqua means that you need to split distributed workflow away from computations and data. Uh, and Aqua is made to express workflows in trusted coordinator-free setups. Uh, it's based on PyCalculus uh, to reason about uh, security and uh, to have completeness, um, to have the powerful enough framework uh, to program almost any algorithm uh, and to not limit developers without the need. And uh, uh, developers can make algorithms on Aqua, then compile it to a set of ER scripts. ER is Aquamarine Intermediate Representation a very small language uh, which is barely usable by humans, uh, but humans can use Aqua. And uh, these scripts, like, they have a very strict execution contract. Uh, and uh, every peer involved into the workflow is able to execute the script, uh, validate it, 
uh, do some computation and uh, proceed. So high-level aqua language basically converts distributed algorithms into composable library functions. Uh, and uh, this leads to platform independent implementations of distributed algorithms. Uh, basically, it works like this, very briefly. Uh, we have lib P2P for connectivity, uh, transport, and all that stuff. Uh, we have some kind of smart package, uh, which we call a particle uh, that contains immutable code and uh, the mutable data. It comes to lib P2P. Uh, lib P2P transfers it to the pool of uh, uh, aqua virtual machines, aqua interpreters, uh, they decide uh, whether to call or not some local computations. Uh, and after that, everything bubbles up uh, and uh, uh, may or may not be transferred to, to the next peers. So compute is controlled by aqua in this case, uh, but only controlled. It's not executed by aqua. It's delegated from aqua to some local peer capabilities. And uh, it could be WebAssembly, it could be native code, it could be Docker, uh, FVM, like you can pl plug uh, in uh, almost anything. Aqua doesn't depend on this. Uh, and we uh, have implemented uh, functions in native Rust, native JavaScript, TypeScript, and WebAssembly with our marine WebAssembly runtime. So, Preparing a peer, a lib P2P peer, uh, to run Aqua is quite simple. Uh, we have two peer implementations in JavaScript and Rust, uh, and uh, uh, it's quite simple to add it uh, to, to something else because Aqua VM itself is compiled to WebAssembly. So to run the interpreter, you just need to have something that runs WebAssembly. A few words about Aqua execution and uh, what's uh, under the hood. So AquaVM basically coordinates uh, the travel of a particle from peer to peer and uh, how the data associated with this particle uh, is mutated locally. Uh, so particle is code and data. Uh, we have uh, the data from the previous execution of this request of this flow, of this execution flow. And uh, uh, when uh, the new data comes in, uh, we check that everything is correct. We merge this data with uh, the previous data. Uh, the decision is made what should be lo uh, executed locally or not. And uh, finally, if there is something that is not executed on this peer and uh, should be executed somewhere, uh, this uh, data moved, is moved to, to the next peers, one or many. Uh, and there is a, like, basically it's a state machine. Uh, error interp interpreter is pure, it's a pure function. Uh, no effects, uh, just input and output. Uh, code execution is uh, idempotent. Uh, execution trace uh, data, this uh, mutable data, forms conflict-free uh, data type. Uh, so, something like that. Uh, and uh, a few uh, simple examples uh, of what Aqua looks like. Uh, on the top, we have a, a sequence diagram uh, with three different peers, uh, some client, uh, some relay, and uh, some other node or like many nodes. And usually to implement this flow, uh, you take verticals and uh, uh, you implement verticals like I'm waiting for uh, the request, when it comes, I do this particular event, like I will send this request uh, to, to the next node. Uh, with Aqua, uh, you express all the flow. Instead of verticals, you, you're focused on what actually happens on the network, on the topology, uh, on the workflow. So uh, here we have a series definition that takes two arguments and returns one argument. Uh, and uh, uh, a function that says that on some node something should be executed, and then we want to get back the result. Here another uh, example um, that shows that actually 
request response is not mandatory. Uh, there could be uh, fire and forget, uh, and uh, uh, we can easily code fork join uh, with parallelism. And in this case, uh, we do some function execution on uh, peers, uh, which are like we fetched somehow, like as arguments or something like that. And uh, then on uh, some peer, uh, we wait. We are doing join. You can do partial join, like MFN, two thirds, anything. Then we do some calculations, and then we uh, proceed the result to some other peer. So if you want to do like notifications, for example, you can easily code it in a very few number of lines, and you don't need to recompile anything, redeploy anything, and uh, Aqua tries to have uh, the least possible number of peers involved into, uh, this, into this flow. The flow is created uh, as a single use coordination network, and when the request is processed, it, it disappears. So um, with uh, Aqua, after this paradigm shift, uh, experience of coding distributed algorithms should uh, be different. Uh, you can play with algorithms fast uh, and improve them incrementally, uh, Unix style or, or libp2p style, uh, because uh, like it's, it's scripts. Uh, it's very fast to, to try out. And uh, uh, many problems are abstracted out uh, because uh, they, are, they have solutions, like connectivity is already done very good. Uh, if you have any computations or any other capabilities, you can easily delegate them to local capabilities of, of the peers. You're focused on something new and how to deliver it. So no need to redeploy the network, no need to recompile the node. Uh, you can publish, you can do research uh, using this uh, uh, approach, this language, and publish the result as an aqua lib, and engineers will catch up. It's quite easy to get from research to some deployments, and these deployments does mean that everything should change. It could be very small deployment. And uh, uh, to use uh, the new algo in many languages, little to no effort is needed. It depends on the compute requirements. If you use something portable to express computations, then you can just deploy this WebAssembly, ask the peer to run it. If you use something not portable, uh, like if you need more performance, something special, or if you did it for, to speed up development, then it's still easier to port because uh, um, you don't need to have uh, requests, responses, uh, await, all, all this network-oriented stuff. You just need to work with, uh, with data uh, and do some data transformations, uh, ensure some invariance, and so on. So it, it, it should be much easier. Still, uh, there are some problems, and uh, this solution is not perfect, at least yet. Uh, one of the questions that we would like to discuss during uh, the IPFA thing is how to lower Aqua back to lib 2 p protocols. Currently, uh, Aqua uh, forms uh, a single, very simple, uh, very like it, it consists from one uh, kind of uh, lib 2 p packages, a very simple protocol on its own, uh, and uh, uh, it's not trivial uh, question how to uh, lower down from what can be expressed with Aqua to native lib 2 protocols, which should be very useful. We investigated this uh, question and we have some ideas, but we need to validate it with the community uh, and check what could be done and, and not. Another question is uh, maybe we have uh, the closer integration with IPLD, uh, and uh, it looks like yes, <laughs> definitely, uh, but uh, also need to speak uh, like uh, how exactly. Uh, I would like to say that the language is uh, very young, uh, and uh, it became really stable and performant just a few months ago. 
So there is no uh, language level solution to express failures and supervising uh, on the language level, uh, which is uh, really needed. You can still express it, but with a lot of code uh, in Aqua, we want to make sugar, but the question is what, what is the best solution to express these things? Uh, and finally, uh, there is no standard library for Aqua. We have a, a default built-in uh, functions uh, that you can call from Aqua, but uh, the algorithms which are currently implemented in Aqua are rather simple. So probably we need to have out of the box uh, Kademlia, Gossip, Raft, member list, and something like that. And uh, uh, I hope that uh, uh, it will be done together with the community uh, so that we together decide what exactly to implement, implement it fast and then trade to leverage uh, all this system. And another question is IPFS implementation .aqua. Uh, Probably we can implement IPFS with Aqua, have it on all the, all the devices, all the peers. Uh, and this should be quite nice. Uh, so that's all. Uh, thanks for listening, uh, and see you on our events during the IP first thing. Uh, we have two events tomorrow, and uh, the day after tomorrow we have uh, a deep dive uh, into Aqua and IPFS. Uh, we will speak about uh, Aqua VM internals, uh, contracts for uh, PyCalculus derived uh, instructions, and things like that. And uh, for sure, anyway, anytime, a big part of uh, the Fluence team is here, and we're ready to, to speak. Finally, if you want to learn more about Aqua language, then Aqua Book is the best source of knowledge. Thank you. <laughs>